So this is the disclosure. This research is funded by the National Cancer Institute, and the, so, and the content is solely the responsibility of the authors of this study. It does not necessarily represent the official views of the National Institutes of Health. None of us have received funding from the tobacco industry or e-cigarette companies, so we declare no conflicts of interest. This is the list of co-authors, so this is a joint work. To begin with our highlights of this study, what we did is we employed the volumetric drugs experiment or VCE for adult e-cigarette users in the US to study on and cross price elasticities among, diff um, among different six types of e-cigarette and uh, cigarettes. And we found different e-cigarette types can substitute each other. Next, we found higher prices and taxes on e-cigarettes and cigarettes will reduce consumptions among adults e-cigarette users in the US. Finally, we found cross-price elasticities between e-cigarettes and cigarettes for US e-cigarette users were largely non-significant. Let me start with the background and motivation. In the US, there is a growing popularity of e electronic cigarettes. In the US, almost 5% of adults are using e-cigarettes and 8% of high and middle schoolers are using e-cigarettes. This growing popularity prompt state and local authorities to start imposing e-cigarette excise taxes. Uh, as of today, more than 50% of U.S. states are now uh, imposing e-cigarette excess taxes. Regarding this, many existing literature studied that uh, increasing e-cigarette taxes can reduce e-cigarette sales and use among both youth and adult populations. However, these studies also found that increasing e-cigarette taxes may increase smoking and cigarette sales, leading to unintended consequences. Uh, which is uh, increasing increased smoking and cigarette sales. That means e-cigarettes and cigarettes are likely economic substitutes. Therefore, the current debate over e-cigarette taxes has also been focused on balancing the intended and unintended consequences of taxing e-cigarettes. However, there still exists evidence gap in the existing literature, which uh, we want to address. First of all, almost all conclusions from existing literature are based on the sales data or repeated cross-sectional data. Therefore, those studies did not control for tobacco users' unobserved heterogeneity. For example, private, private beliefs in the risk of e-cigarettes or their, their simple preference for e-cigarettes using individual fixed bags. Another limitation of existing uh, e-cigarette literature of text is that they treat e-cigarettes as a homogeneous group while their characteristics and tax burdens may vary significantly. For example, most studies use past 30 day use as the sole outcome, even if there are many different types of e-cigarettes uh, that, that people can choose. Based on that, the economic relationships, for example, whether they are substitute or complements among different types of e-cigarettes and between various e-types, e-c-types and cigarettes are widely unknown despite their differential appeals and potentials to replace traditional cigarettes. Another limitation we want to address is that our dual, user, dual use status of e-cigarettes and cigarettes were not well addressed in the existing data. Many papers use survey data but they often measure whether to use cigarettes or e-cigarettes instead of measuring the exact quantities they want to uh, use. That means the allocations between e-cigarettes and cigarettes among dual users were uh, usually unknown. 
the last point we want to mention about the existing literature is unlike cigarettes, e-cigarettes are platform goods. So this is a very this is a very unique feature. Uh, so, and this works similarly to Curie coffee machine, which consists of an expensive device plus uh, more affordable ref refills. So we allowed the purchasing patterns, uh, the possibility that purchasing patterns uh, of e-cigarettes could be very different from cigarettes due to the nature of this platform goods. And we wanted to uh, investigate uh, this feature of e-cigarettes in this study. So what we did, we conducted a volumetric trux experiment or VCE to fill in evidence gap. And this methodology has uh, many advantages. First of all, we allowed uh, within variation, with, uh, within individual variations that address this confounding issues. That means we were able to control for individual fixed effects in assessing the price impacts on e-cigarettes and cigarette consumptions. Next, we allowed for the estimation of cross and own price elasticities for different e-cigarette types, which the existing observational study data, survey data were not able to estimate due to the lack of reporting. Therefore, we were able to make causal interpretation of the results, uh, the impact of prices and taxes on consumption. And this methodology is widely used in medical decision making to mention is that this experiment is very flexible in modeling this. And this is advantageous over this creature experiments because this creature experiment usually allow uh, whether the whether the survey participants wants to use this or not. So it has a very simple outcome, but we allowed uh, for the allocations between e-cigarettes and cigarettes. The other flexibility is that we can model platform goods, which is which consists of an expensive device for one-time purchase plus relatively cheaper refills. So these are the all advantages that uh, we could utilize in this study. Again, we want to study own and cross prior elasticities among different e-cigarette types and cigarettes. So we employed the volumetric choice experiment for adult e-cigarette users in the US. So how we did participants could choose. So we chose uh, we chose these six different types of e-cigarettes. Disposable tank device with illiquid bottles and illiquid them, which has a uh, pot device or pot, uh, pot starter kit or pot refills. So there are a total six different e cigarette types, and they were chosen based on their market shares. And we plus, uh, plus we also consider uh, the, the cigar cigarettes in their choice set. Now we want to explain more details about the methodology. We conducted an online volumetric tricks experiment last May after pre-testing the survey uh, and the design. We were able to recruit 808 e-cigarette users who are over aged 18 in the US. We recruited them through the knowledge panel and uh, we, we, select, we selected the sample, uh, we selected the e-cigarette user who reported any past 30 day use of e-cigarettes and who lived in the US. Finally, we collected individuals who provided valid answers to the experimental questions, totaling of 700 individuals in the final sample. So what participants actually did, they answered nine 
voice questions. In each question, they reported the number of units they will purchase for monthly use among the following products, cigarette, disposable, pots, and tank systems. Participants were advised to make purchases within their monthly budget and respond to changing prices and taxes we manipulated across uh, choice questions. And for process and tank system, we asked the participants to report the number of units for different components of the system. For example, for a pot system, we asked the number of units they want, the number of pot device units they want to consume or pot, pack price, pot packs to consume or pot starter kit to consume separately to the participants. And of course, participants were allowed not to buy any of the products. This table summarizes how we manipulated prices and tax levels for different choice sets. For things that stand, passes and disposable and cigarettes. We allowed prices and taxes to vary among the low level, high level, a medium level or high level for the device prices. So the low level means the price they face, the participant faces is the, is at the 20 percentile of the distribution of the market prices for tank systems, pot systems. And we allow, also allowed the tax levels to vary across choice level, across choice sets. For example, there could be no taxes for the prices and there could be low tax burden, which is 10% of the retail price or high tax burden for the uh, tax burden for the retail prices. And similar manipulations were made for the refill components of tank system and pot systems. Based on that, uh, based on the manipulations of prices and taxes, this is the mean prices that participants faced during their uh, choice experiments. And this is the example of choice experiment screen that each participant faces. First of all, they should uh, choose the, the type of products they want to they want to consume for the next month among disposables, pot systems, tank systems, and cigarettes. Then they should answer the number of units of each product they want to consume within their monthly budget. If they enter the number of units they want to buy with uh, based on the prices and taxes, then the screen automatically calculated the balance and they the participants were advised to buy the products within their monthly budget they reported. So far, I explained how the experiments were conducted. Now I want to explain what's the regression we used to estimate the cross and own price elasticities of e-cigarettes and cigarettes. This is the equation. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have person I's consumption units of products in choice set M, and we controlled uh, the type of product using ASC or alternative specific constant to estimate how the consumption of product J significantly differs by product or its alternatives. And we controlled the levels of prices and the vector of prices of alternatives to product J. And we also control for individual fixed effects and beta on and beta cross JK will capture own price elasticity and cross price elasticity. In addition, we also allowed group differences by uh, e-cigarette and cigarette dual use status, which means we allowed interactions between the different group 
and cross price elasticities between cigarettes in cigarettes to see if there is a systemic difference between e-cigarette only users and e-cigarette and cigarette dual users in terms of their cigarette consumption responses to the, cha to the changing e-cigarette prices. So I will stop here and see if there are any questions to be answered. Thank you so much, Sua. We'll go over to our discussant first for any questions at this point. Hi, yeah, I'm Don Cable. I... Hi. Um, hi. Thank you for a very clear presentation. Uh, I guess I have, uh, well, I'll start off with two little, mi very minor clarification questions. Um, well, I guess more almost interpretation question. The first is in that screen, um, you you know, sort of circled, you know, the none of these response in discrete choice experiments, and that's like these VCEs as well. That's a little bit hard to know how to interpret. I saw a um, FDA literature review that actually criticized using that type of approach in VCEs because it wasn't clear. Does this mean that the, resp the subject is going to quit using e-cigarettes or cigarettes? Or does it mean they're just sort of refusing to play the game in this particular round because they don't like the, the choices offered to them? Yes, that's a good, good question. So if the subject says, I will not respond to any of these questions, then we actually didn't make um, special interpretations on their um, non-responses. We we could just we could just interpret that maybe they um if if they are like too tired to answer these questions anymore they could there's the one possibility and the other possibility is that maybe under this price levels maybe they just want to buy the buy any amounts of these cigarettes or cigarette products but we I think we can't interpret this they will quit uh, using e-cigarettes or cigarettes because they are already e-cigarette users and there is no clue that we can interpret that they will quit this type of consumption or not. So, yeah, I hope that this could yeah, no, 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 answer that, your that, question. Yeah, that's reasonable. I, got, um, I mean, the other one is also a matter of interpretation. When I looked at the seven products on the choice task screen, you know, I thought about the old, you know, um, two of these things are not like the others. Um, the two things are the pod device and the tank device, and your clear, your presentation made it clear that that's because these are platform goods. But I'm a little bit wondering, you know, what happens if I already own a tank or a device or a pod device because I'm a vapor. Everybody in this in the sample is vapors. I never say I'm going to buy those because I know I don't need them. Is that a problem, or do you sort of? Um, Yes, they might answer uh, differently depending on whether they have the device or not. So if they didn't have a device, so we actually asked what device are you using right now? Oh, good. So yeah, so we if they don't have the device, then we were asked to we, they were asked to buy that device first and refills if if they want to buy the refills. And if they already have the device, of course they don't have to buy the refills. So that's how we conducted the survey. Okay. That's all the questions I had now for now. Yeah. Thanks for asking that. Yeah. That makes yeah, really help. That makes this presentation really yeah, for profitable for everybody. Great. I think C is going ahead and answering all the questions that are in the QA at this point. So I'd suggest to uh, go on and tell us your exciting results at this point. Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe the question from Victoria. I think it's being answered right now by C oh. in real time. Yeah. I see. Yeah, yeah. Even if C is answering this question, maybe I can add some okay, sure, on sure. this. So yeah, the flavors, for the flavors, uh, participants were allowed to uh, choose, allowed to choose the their, their favorite flavor, which means if they want to buy that product, then that's the that's their favorite flavor. The if if it answers the question. Oh, 
and the concentration levels were were not optional. So concentration levels were just given by the design of the study. Oh, it was answered by by C. Great. Yeah, thanks C. Thank you. And I don't know if any of our listeners are having issues, but Sua, you were breaking up a little bit for me in the first half. You seem better now. So I think let's keep your video on. But if it starts breaking up again, just to let everyone know what I'm going to do is interrupt you and ask you to turn your video off so we can make sure we can hear you. Yeah, I just see. Some connection issue. So yeah. if I come in and interrupt you, my apologies. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah, I will stop my video so that I can have more fun. Yeah, stable yeah. internet connection. Sorry for the inconvenience. That's, that's life in this day and age. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. So please do continue. Yeah. Thanks, Jamie. So uh, now I want to tell you about the results we have. This is the distribution of consumption units that participants actually want to buy in the choice set questions. So total, we have over 33,000 observations, which consists of 700 different individuals times seven different product types, times an average of 6.8 answered questions. You can see that many of the observations included zero. So with this excess zero, actually this makes sense because in the existing studies or data, people usually prefer a, one type of uh, e-cigarette products. So yeah, having excess zeros uh, is actually quite expected from uh, from the design of the study. And this is the use patterns so of how frequently they use uh, e-cigarettes and cigarettes. More than 70% of e-cigarette users said they are using e-cigarettes every day. And we also ask whether uh, how, how often they use cigarettes. And 63% people answered that they are using cigarettes as well. Therefore, total 36% of total e-cigarette users were e-cigarettes and cigarette duo users. For the smoking status by e-cigarette use frequency or use patterns, daily e-cigarette users answer that they smoke in the past uh, at some point at, in their life, but uh, but only 26% said they are currently smoking. However, for some days e-cigarette users, 64% answer that they are currently smoking. So they have a higher proportion of uh, smoking cigarettes. And this is the distribution of products they use. And this is the distribution of different ages and different genders. They were quite well distributed. And this is the distribution of household income. We found that uh, own price elasticities are generally negative, which is, is expected. So yeah, yeah, so this is the own price elasticities for different types of e-cigarettes, disposable pot device to e-liquid bottles and also cigarettes. They were largely negative and significant. We also estimated cross price elasticities between different e-cigarettes and cigarettes and e-cigarettes and cigarettes. And overall, we found that pot systems are substitutes for disposable products or illiquid bottles. And we also found that pot kit are pot kit and pot packs can substitute each other. And pot kit uh, and illiquid bottles also have some substitutability between them. And illiquid bottles are complements to the tank device uh, that should be used with a liquid bottle. So this, uh, this magnitude and the sign was, um, was, uh, uh, was consistent with our expectation. Okay. Uh, before we uh, move on to the conclusions, I would like to mention that we didn't find any large significant 
substitutability between any 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 e-cigarette types and cigarettes, which many existing studies found. So we want to further address why we think that was our conclusion in contrast to the other studies in the in the in the few following slides. Okay, so we want to wrap up. So using volumetric choice experimental design, we found that higher prices and taxes on e-cigarettes and cigarettes will reduce consumptions among adult e-cigarette users in the US. However, we found that cross price elasticities between e-cigarettes and cigarettes for e-cigarette users were largely non-significant. That means cigarette taxes unlikely move dual users of cigarettes and e-cigarettes to use e-cigarette more instead of quitting smoking, instead of cigarette smoking. Similarly, higher e-cigarette prices or taxes may not lead to increased cigarette use of adult e-cigarette users in the US. And the conclusions did not vary by whether an e-cigarette user is a dual user of e-cigarettes and cigarettes or an exclusively e-cigarette using person. We found different e-cigarette types are substitutes. For example, pots are substitutes for disposable and tank system, and pot kits and pot refills are substitutes. And tank systems and illiquid e bottles are complements. And the policy implication is that if there is a consensus about which e-cigarette type can have the greatest potential for helping, helping quitting smoking, while not as preferred by young populations, tax policies can be effectively designed to promote the use of a certain type of e-cigarette type. And we want to further address why there was no significant substitutability between e-cigarettes and cigarettes. The first thing we want to mention is that all existing observational studies did not control for individual fixed effect, which we did. So that could be one reason for that. And we also want to mention there were some differences in collected samples. We used nationally representative sample of adult e-cigarette users in our study. However, other, other observation study used the general adult populations, whether they use e-cigarettes or not. Therefore, e-cigarette or cigarette use, whether they use or not, may be more impacted by taxes and prices than exact consumption units that we asked. So similarly, we have different outcomes than other existing studies and consumption. So we use consumption units in our experiment, but other studies use use or not for sales measures in their studies. So that would be one another reason behind the non-substitutability between e-cigarettes and cigarettes. And there could be some possibility of hypothetical biases in choice experiments. So the participants can actually act differently in the real world situation as opposed to the choice experiment environment. But of course, we did take every step to reduce this uh, possible biases. For example, participants were making choices based on their current budget in life. And we consider the mechanisms such as motivations to complete tests. And we also uh, wanted the participants to report real life behaviors. Lastly, we want to mention the sensitivity analysis and further plans regarding this study. First of all, this uh, volumetric choice experiment was not designed to conduct stratified analysis. That means we didn't mean the we didn't mean the design to be able to separate the sample into two different groups and see whether they behave differently to tax and price impacts, but uh, 
Nonetheless, we did certify analysis and the conclusions did not change whether the sample was e-cigarette only users or e-cigarettes and cigarette dual users. In the future, we will reconduct analysis by converting outcomes from purchasing units into nicotine consumption, the actual nicotine cons uh, consumption they will uh, have. And, uh, and another plan we have is to estimate the impacts of tax levels instead of the final prices on outcomes. Based on that, we want to predict market share shifts under different tax scenarios. And the final plan we have is we want to assess possible hypo hypothetical biases where we will estimate cross and own price elasticities using the Dayton method, which relies on real world expenditure data. That's all we have now from the slides. So thanks for uh, joining me today and listening to our research presentation. And I will take more questions regarding the uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sua. So we have some questions coming in via the Q&A, but I'll start off with our discussion uh, and then move on to those. We have plenty of time for questions, so keep them coming. All right. Um Thank you very much. A very nice and clear presentation. So um, I wanted to start off with, for full transparency, um, disclosing my um, background. I have a long history of NIH funding, and I'm still invited to peer review for the NIH now and then um, through grants to Cornell from the found. I'm all my current funding is from grants to Cornell from the Foundation for a Smoke Free World, which is a 5013C nonprofit, um, mm -hmm. and. The, until September 2023, the FSFW accepted gifts from PMI, a tobacco product manufacturer. If you want to see the full disclosure, you can go to our web page. This is the Cornell Research on Tobacco Regulation. Um, but of course, my views here are my own and don't reflect my employer, NIH, or the FSFW. Uh, so back to the my comments. Um, I, I'm, I think it's a really nice uh, project. I really am excited to see the extension of kind of the discrete choice experiment approach to this um, volumetric approach. I mean, I, I think I would add to the contributions is that the, you know, the quasi experimental approach that's been used in a lot of studies is great, but it's been sort of, it's limited in the early cycle of the policies like, like e-cigarette taxes. And, there just haven't been that many e-cigarette taxes. And a lot of the first e-cigarette taxes were tiny. And mm -hmm. that means we didn't really have good quasi-experiments to study. Mm -hmm. That's changing over time. But still, mm -hmm. I think an important contribution is of, to, of any of these choice experiments is in that context. But the other mm -hmm. thing I really like about this is this volumetric. And especially because it allows for more complicated substitution and complementary mm -hmm. complement dis, um, relationships. I mean, essentially, in a discrete choice experiment, things are kind of forced to be substitutes. You choose this or that, but here you don't have to. And I think that's a really neat um, result. And in fact, you know, I think the result that cigarettes and e-cigarettes are neither complements nor substitutes. There's sort of no strong relationship between the prices there. It's a very important finding. Um, of course, it's, you know, it is very specific to the, the population studied and you add the, the the slides you had at the end make that clear. Um, uh, but I think at, at one level, you know, that's it. Some of the some of the people in your study are exactly the types of people we'd be worried about that if a cigarette tax, for example, I mean, if the cigarette tax, for example, pushed somebody who was a current only user of e-cigarettes back into smoking, I mean, that'd be kind of the worst disaster in terms of public health. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're not finding this in a sample of, main, of all, all e-cigarette users, mm -hmm. I think is, you know, is important for public health. Um, again, with all subject to all the caveats you put in and also subject to the um, the, the further approach. Um, another comment that I was, question I was going to ask, I guess now just turns into a comment that I think it's useful to explore the link between these BCEs, these volumetric choice experiments and consumer demand theory and consumer welfare theory more. Um, I was looking at one of the background papers about this, 
um, by um, Car Richard Carson and Louvier and some others. Um, and they pointed out, they, 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 they think that's an important area to develop. Uh, but your last bullet, when you started talking about linking it back into like the Deaton approach um, is back to con standard consumer theory. So I think you've already, you're already working on that project. I guess I will actually make two, two questions. I'll, I'll just say them now and you can handle them. Um, what, one comment is just that while I understand using the count data model, um, the zero inflated negative binomial, and I see, you know, why it can't be a Poisson because the, you know, standard deviation is much larger than the variant than the mean. Um, I'm always a little bit nervous about moving away, moving to fancy econometrics, and I would recommend just trying OLS ordinary least squares on this. And I'd, I'd take as an example that, or as, as part of this advice would be from um, Angrist and Pischke and Mar Mostly Harmless Econometrics, where they refer to um, conditional and positive analysis, and they call it the good cop and bad cop analysis. Mm -hmm. But they just say, look, OLS just generates marginal effects. Think of it that way, and don't worry so much about the distribution of the left-hand side variable. So th that'd be one comment. And the other comment was, I thought it was a little bit surprising. It was great that you found that e-cigarette, that the, that the tank, the tanks and the bottles were complements. That makes perfect sense. I'm yes. wondering how worried we should be that the pod kits and the pod packs were not complements, were substitutes, which makes less sense. Uh, and I'll stop there. Yes, uh, thanks for your comments. Um, if I want to add a little bit comments for its, the substitute, uh, substitutability between kits and uh, pack of pots. So I think it just came from the fact that uh, usually a pot kit is a is a kit for starters of pot, pot system. So they include a device and a small number of pot uh, pot refills. So that's why people can and people feel that pot kits and pot pack of pots can substitute each other. So and the pot kids also go through a lot of sales promotion in and uh from the from the uh from the sellers. So that's why uh people can substitute between these two products, even if they are not, they don't function exactly the same. Um actually let me just jump in one time. I also meant to mention I really liked your last bullet in uh, sort of the conclusions about the trade-offs. I think that's a great idea that. Um, you know, we're the FDA Center for Tobacco Products is making all these uh, marketing granted orders or mainly marketing denial orders based on the trade offs. And I think it's a great dimension to think about whether it should be thinking about the trade offs between different types of devices. If they, you know, they've been mainly talking about flavors or not, the flavors, um, have, you know, all the applications submitted haven't passed muster because there's not enough evidence that the benefits for adult smokers to quit outweigh the risk to youth. Mm -hmm. But I think if, if you know, the, the similar kind of question is if there are different types of systems that are more often used by adults than, or, or by kids, then that's another way that the FDA could start um, trying to uh, bet, you know, finer tune their regulatory approach. Yes, thanks for the comments. I, I think that really, that's a really important point for policymakers when they think about the taxing, then they should also substitutability between different e-cigarette types for that are not, that are taxed or that are taxed that are not taxed. So yeah, that has a very important public health policy implications. Yeah. Thanks for uh, pointing out that. Thanks so much. We'll now move into the questions that I can see in the Q&A at the moment, unless you have anything else you'd like to add right now, Don. Perfect. All right. So we have a note from D. Gordon Draves of something that has passed last year via the Georgia General Assembly. I don't know if you can see that, Sua, and if you have any comments about that. Okay, I think this uh, this uh, comment was uh, in line with uh, the 
answered uh, previously answered questions. Okay. okay. And then I see C is typing an answer right now, but you might want to talk to this as well since we have you, where Flo Foxen is suggesting another reason for not finding a significant positive cross price elasticity between e-cigarettes and combustible cigarettes could have been that the study was underpowered. Other studies have found positive cross prices, but with wide confidence intervals, so a lot of imprecision there. So they've asked what was the... Ooh, I've now lost the question. What was the direction of the kind of point estimate? Uh, even if, so if we're not focused on statistical significance, but instead the direction of the effect. Yeah, I think C has answered this question um, but just, just right now. And the VC, yes, yes. So, so even if I didn't present mm. the, the difference between e-cigarette only users and e-cigarette and cigarette dual users. So it has a really small um, zero numbers, um, like uh, the numbers. So, and the, the standard error, the, the, the uh, what's that? The confidence interval mm -hmm. was including, all including the zero range. So we, inter we interpreted that this, um, is non worth this is uh, this is uh not not large enough to interpret that there is something so there okay. is some specific difference between e cigarette user only users and dual users great so it looks like C is explaining that essentially it would have been powered to detect a very small effect so the fact that it didn't tells us that there wasn't any sort of large effect that just wasn't being picked up because of um, statistical significance. And then we have another question from Claudio Zanatini, who's asking, they say they're not very familiar with the specific experimental procedure. So they have what might be a naive question, but we love those as many of us are naive to some of these specific methods. So they've asked, given that some of the results were not expected, how was the specific procedure validated? Do you have positive and negative controls? So how was the specific procedure validated? Well, before we conducted the uh, actual experiment, we pretested the um, the organization of the study uh, using 27 e-cigarette users in the US. So mm. yeah, I really believe that this is uh is not a is not a negligible number uh, to conduct a pretest. So we yeah, so we did we took every step to make the procedure valid in each step. So probably, yeah, that would be uh, answering the question. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have any more questions from the audience or from our discussant? Uh, we have a question from Salim Haddad. Can you describe VCM? Sorry, what was that again? Uh, the question was, can you describe VCM, v, uh, VCE? Oh, VCE, VCE. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, so it's a volumetric choice experiment. Uh, we can understand this type of experimental study as opposed to discrete choice experiments. So in discrete choice model, we ask participants to choose this or not. So it has a very simple choice set. But in volumetric choice experiment, we asked how many units of disposable do you want to buy within uh, at this price range, so at this price level or taxes. So that's how VCE is different from discrete choice experiment model. And it's that's um, the key, right? It's the volume that's coming yes, in. Yes, volume. Yes, volume. Right. Yeah. I wanted to jump in and just you know just underline that difference is that you know a discrete choice experiment, when you have to choose one thing or the other, you know, there is no such thing as dual use in a discrete choice experiment. Everybody's choosing in one round, they're choosing either cigarettes or e-cigarettes. And that's what's so exciting about this approach is it allows for real dual use, which of course is a much more realistic description of how people really, not everybody, but how a lot of people, a lot of smokers and, and vapors actually make choices. 
Thank you both. That was very clear. Thanks. Any more for any more? Just keeping an eye on the q and I don't think we have any more. So I will hand us back over to our MC, Anika, to close us out for the day. Thanks. We are out of time. However, if you still have any burning questions or thoughts for so and so are Anne, uh, you can join us for Top of the Tops, an interactive group discussion offered immediately following Select top, Tops events this season. Um, to join, please copy the Zoom meeting room URL, post in the chat, and switch rooms with us This once this um, event concludes. We'll leave this webinar room open for an extra minute after the end to give everyone a chance to copy the URL, which is bit.ly forward slash tops meeting all lowercase. Thank you to our presenter, moderator, and discussant. Finally, thank you to the audience of 175 people for your participation. Have a tops notch weekend. Thanks.